So printing a variable has to be the most common thing we do in Python. But how does it work internally? In this video, we go through the source code of Python language to understand how print function in Python really works and to ensure that our understanding is correct, we modify the print function to print object metadata as well. The intention of this video is to make you all understand how easy it is to make changes to a massive code base and contribute to open source. It does feel overwhelming, but when we take baby steps, things do become really simple. This is the third video of the series. So I would recommend you to check the other ones out. There is no hard dependency for this video and other videos. So let's jump right into it. Here I have my C Python code base set up. Now here, when I do make, it builds a binary locally, which I can run. And that binary, the Python binary is built from this very source code, right? The build is complete. When I do dot slash Python, it runs the Python interpreter built from this very source code. Now, I, whenever I want to print something, I can just pass in that thing and it gets printed. Now, in this massive code base, I don't know where the implementation of print function is. I don't know where it is implemented. So how do I find it? In this massive code base, the thing is that if I just do a brute force search of print like this, expecting that I would find the print function, I could see that there are more than 5,000 plus, 5,400 plus results. That's insane. I cannot go through all of them. So there has to be a better way. So what I typically do with Python is that in Python, when we type in help of a particular function name, it prints the help string of it or the doc string of it. So when I do this, I get this, that print function takes args, which is variable length args, you can pass it as tuple, a uh, separator and an end, a file and a flush. And then it says prints the values to a stream or std out by default. So the documentation that this is generating has to be part of the source code. Otherwise, how it is getting printed. Right? So what I'll do is I'll grab this and I'll search for this. Now those 5,442 results that were there have now just reduced to two. And one is a .c file, one is a .h file. We can easily see the implementation has to be in the .c file. You could see this exact same thing that was there uh, in the documentation we see over here. May not be like word to word, but you at least narrow it down to the place that matters. Right? Now here we see beneath that a built-in print impl, which is the implementation of print function. And we see below this in the documentation, we see print args separator end file and flush args separator end file and flush. This has to be this function, right? Now, given this, given we have converged to the function. Now let's understand what print function actually does. And then we'll see in the C code, in the C Python code that exactly getting implemented. So the print function prints whatever we pass to the print function, uh, uh, variable one comma variable two comma variable three and so on and so forth arcs followed by, you can pass an optional key, optional quarks separator, which means when you are printing something, how do you want them to be separated? Let me give you a quick example of that. So let's say I do print one, two, three. Now when I do one, two, three, it prints one space, two space, three. But now I can just change this to say print one, two, three. And I can say that my separator has to be a hyphen, not a space. So it's space one space, uh, one hyphen, two hyphen, three. Similarly, when I just say that by default, it ends with a slash N, but I can say that end it with done. So I could see one, two, three, D O N E. And then the prompt started because I didn't end it with a slash. And so you can see where end happens. You can see where separator goes in, right? Similarly, the file is where you need to write by default, it's STD out, but you can pass in any file object and it would write it to that location, right? To that file, right? Okay. Now that we understand how print, like how print is used, let's see this exact same thing through the source code and then we also modify the source code. Now here we see that as the function execution starts, it first checks if file is none. Because none is different from null, C has null, Python has none. The none in Python is also an object called pyNone. Right? So if file is equal to equal to none, which means no file is passed, then what do we do? We use std out. That's what we did over here. So we see file. If file is none, then file is equal to std out. We don't understand a lot of things around that, but we get the idea on what's happening here. 
file is equal to std out right that's what we want then if separator is none which means no separator is passed then you use the separator then you set separator as null you set it as null otherwise you set it something and then what you are doing is you are iterating through this where did it go okay we go over here the args that were passed were star args which means it would be a tuple so i would iterate through the tuple iteration through tuple is for i equal to 0 i is less than length of tuple i plus plus this that i equal to 0 i is less than pi tuple get size should be getting me the size of the tuple i plus plus and then if separator is null i am writing string space to the file which is the default separator so it is writing string to the file and the file if passed that file otherwise std out that we already handled at first so this is where the separator is getting return and then we are if separator is not null then that corresponding separator is written right so if it is null space is written if not null then the separator is written then if error equal to null something like that i don't know what it is some error handle while writing to a file some error happened that error is captured and return null and here once this if i greater than zero is done then we are writing write object pi tuple get item args comma i this looks like from tuple we are getting an item so ith item from this args and we are writing that object to file and some print raw should be printing as string or something we don't know but that's okay we don't need to know everything right so we are getting that object and printing it over here and some error condition once this iteration is complete we are checking end if end is null we pass slash n pass as in we write slash n to the file which is exactly the default end and otherwise we write end over there and apart from that if flush is passed we do flush and all but you get the idea on what's happening right the exact flow that we thought of is exactly what is implemented in c now we know where the object is getting written whatever or whichever object we pass is getting written it's written is getting written over here pi file write object tuple get item args comma i write to this file in a raw format now let's do this apart from just printing the object let's add some metadata to it just so that we ensure that our understanding is correct so now what do we do we want to first of all we will we what do we want to print we want to know what exists before we decide what we want to print so what i would do is i would take this tuple object in python everything is a pi object so i'll store it in pi object star obj equal to this right and we pass this obj over here which means it would not break my existing flow existing one would run as is now we need to know what exists for us to know what we are trying to print so what exists in this object so this object contains two things reference count ob underscore ref count and ob underscore type ref count looks like the reference counting that is used for garbage collection that how many variables or how many places where is this variable getting referenced from is stored over here and ob underscore type should be the type of the object so that depending on which it invokes a corresponding str method should be that so what we'll do is let's say we want to print it in this format we would want to print it in this format let's say we want to print the type of the object first angular bracket type of the object colon reference count of the object then angular bracket close and space after which i want to print the actual object right just making changes to it so that we understand how to go about it right now given this is what we want to print when the print function is invoked on a particular object i want to get this information we know that obj arrow type would give me the type but let's see because we want to print the name of the type so we see a bunch of thing in type because obj ob underscore type is the pi type object so pi type object would have something pi type object is a struct of underscore type object i click on that i could see something over here i could see a const cat star tp underscore name tp underscore name looks like the name of the type it, it's also written for printing in format module dot name so this has to be the name of the type so i'll take that and type tp underscore name so this is what is giving me the name of the type of the object which we are getting which we are printing and another thing is ob under uh, ob arrow ob 
underscore ref count or something. It would not auto complete because it's uh, uh, the, there is a syntax error. We'll sort that out. That's fine. So we want to print that stuff. Now, when we are printing the print function, we cannot just write printf over here. What we are doing is we are writing, we have to adhere to the way other things are written because we, if we write printf, it will be printing to std, uh, to, it will be printing to std out. But what if the user passed in some file, we want to write it to this file. So we cannot use raw printf. We know the function that Python is using to print it. It's py file write object. So I will use the same function to write. But what do you want to write? Object is anyway getting printed over here. Before that, we want to print that angular thing. So which means we want to print the metadata. Now, when we want to print the metadata, it has to be a string object, but we'll write everything as by op we'll write metadata is equal to string in python is a unicode so it, all the functions of string are pi unicode but we want to construct unicode from something we'll go through the functions that exist append no we don't want to append to this as this as this there are a lot of functions we want to create pi unicode from something there has to be a function from something so pi unicode from encoded object from format from object from ordinal from string from format this looks this supposed to look like from a format from a string format so let me click that go through this and see what this function does it does take a const char star format and then it prints it in that specific format this is the one that we would need colon uh, sorry quotes we passed in angular brackets percentage s because we want to print the type name first colon reference count followed by a space and i would pass in the ob underscore tp name and ob underscore ref count let it auto complete but it's okay R -E -F -C -N -T. right okay so we created object so pi unicode from format it returns what pi unicode slash format returns pi object star so we'll use this pi object star as a return type over here making it very close to the one that we wrote over there and then we are doing pi write object does this we we'll copy paste the same error condition check that we did over here like this right so we didn't know the internals of python we just looked at the code around us to figure out what we could do right and then we just look for it right now we could see pi unicode format returning pi object metadata over here we are first writing the metadata which would print angular bracket percentages colon percentage d followed by a space then we write the actual object now to just ensure that our understanding is correct we'll build the binary again and then we print it right and then we print and see if the thing that we intend is really getting printed or not Fine. so the build will happen will the build will complete in a few seconds it's about to complete now what we'll do is tuk, 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 tuk. complete complete import says this is typically the final step that would happen finally i'll open the shell i'll let me create a dictionary d which contains string which contains a key a and value one right and now what i want to do is i want to print this dictionary print d Bingo. What do we see? We see angular brackets, dictionary, colon three, space, and the dictionary string version of it. Right? So this clearly see so shows the print function that we actually modified is the one that is getting invoked. And we are now printing the type of the object along with the reference count of because these are the two only two things we could find it in Python, like in the pi object struct that we had. Right? But now we see that the TP name is getting printed and the reference count is getting printed. Right now we can pass in anything, anything to this. Let's say I do print of arpeth. It print str colon minus one. I'm not sure what minus one is, but the type is string that makes sense. And arpeth is getting printed beyond that. And minus one, it's a, it's a funny thing. We'll we'll figure it out over time what minus one stands for. When because this means that the reference count is minus one. Not sure what minus one is. We'll sort it. Right? Okay. But in general, we do know what reference count is. A reference count is the number of references or the number of places from which this variable is getting reference. It is a very famous garbage collection technique, like right? reference counting based garbage collection. So if our thing is true, 
that this is what ref count is storing. So if I create two lists L1 and L2, I know that for my dictionary D, my ref count is three, right? Which means that from three places it is getting referenced. I don't know which three because we have just initialized that thing. Internally, maybe Python would be using to reference it somewhere. We don't know. But let's say it's three. So if I do an L1 dot append of D, the ref count should increase became four because now it is also getting reference in the list L1. Now if I do L2 dot append of D and I do print of D, ref count became five because now there are four five places L1, L2 and the three default, right? We saw like the reference count is indeed the reference count used for garbage collection. So now by following where the ref count is changing and all, we can actually understand how, how garbage collection works in Python, right? That's the beauty of it. When a language is open source, you can do so much with it. You can understand so many intric intricate details of it and have fun around, right? So yeah, we touched upon quite a few things in this one, right? So just to summarize on what all we did is we found a way to like we saw how we can use documentation to figure out where the source code is. We did that. Then we made modifications. We understood how Python print works. We uh, like how Python print, like, sorry, what Python print does. Then we followed the source code to understand how it actually does that. Then we modified the source code to add the meta information with that. In the meta information, we figured out there is some called type and some uh, ref count. We saw the type arrow name gave us the name of the type which we used in printing. Ref count gave us the number of references that object has from other places. And we also, just for the sake of it, we added things or we added that same object, the dictionary object at multiple list to see reference, reference count getting increased, right? But we are not touching upon garbage collection in this one, but you get the idea, right? It's a very simple changes that we made, but it helped us uncover garbage collection bit of it. Now we can trace where garbage collection would happen. We got comfortable in understanding that what pi objects are, how to create it, how we are printing it, how the flow is structured. And yeah, that's fascinating. This is a sign of a very good open source code base that even for a beginner like us who have no idea on what this thing is, you can still by your intuition, by just following code that exists around you, you can write and make good enough changes to an existing code base, right? And yeah, highly recommend you to do this. Highly recommend you to do this hands-on on your machine. It's really easy to do it. And yeah, that's all what I wanted to cover. This was the third video in the C Python eternal series where I'm trying to cover on how easy it is to make changes to gigantic open source code bases and in the process, learn a few internals about Python. So yeah, I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.